that uh, you just said before you came on air with us uh, to David and myself that uh, we're looking at a year of two halves. Yes, we are. So the first half is mostly going to be focused on income because we believe that the Fed is going to continue to hike rates and there's a 70% probability of a recession in the US. So this kind of environment mm. favors the high quality bonds and they tend to be the ones that would be outperforming in such scenarios. But after that, we're looking for a pause around 5.25. We believe the Fed is likely to pause and then eventually cut some rates to around 4.5 um, in the second half of next year. Mm. So that kind of environment is quite good for equities and especially for the growth stocks that have been beaten down this year. Uh, more on the income side, there's a debate within fixed income. Why should I do IG credit if there are treasuries right now, which might actually benefit when the Fed turns? Plus, you get the income. Well, IG credit, we believe that is two things. There's going to be the yield, and there's also going to be the capital appreciation. Okay. And they are a little bit more sensitive to mm. capital appreciation. And we're also looking to, you know, we're advising clients to be extending a duration as well. Ah, there it given is. Given the fact that we think the U.S. 10-year probably go to... Um, yeah, around 3.75 to 4 in the first half of next year, but then go to 3.25 okay. in the second half. Derek, you know, when you mm. talk about uh, income, I mm. mean, that's what it's going to be about because the years of free money meant that you had this hard task trying to get yield anywhere. Uh, now yeah. that you're getting yields, you go off chase yield as opposed to capital appreciation, wouldn't you agree? Well, you want to be safe, though. You want to be safe. You want to be safe, so you marginally you can be in the high yield but then at the same time you want to be you're on the safe side where it's always like exactly. a, um, yeah. a, a like more like a two-pronged approach right in a way right so, yeah yeah so the risk reward was there. okay let's let's talk about the second half then um, growth cyclicals I mean I think China I could be wrong what do you what are you thinking yeah China we like um, we have got Asia X Japan is an overweight region Okay. And China is an overweight within Asia and Japan because we believe that you know, all the you know, big topics are being addressed, right? Yes. So the property, like you've said before, is you know, continuing to be you know, backstopped from the government. Mm. Um, there's also the reopening. You know, right now, yes, there's you know, infections, but we have been there yeah. for the rest of the world. We know that you know, eventually it's going to tell off. And then don't forget that the household deposit in China right now is 40% higher than pre-pandemic. So people have been saving up mm. and imagine all these being, some of, at least some of these being released. The revenge to spending. consumption. Yeah, yeah. revenge spending. Yeah, all bottled up. Yeah, that's a, mm. uh, I mean, you've yeah. got that. But again, you've got the headwind of how the whole COVID scenario plays out as well. I mean, that's, yeah. the, obvious, that's the obvious yeah. thing to talk so, about there, isn't it? Yeah, so for the moment, you see that you know, today Hang Seng is up because of property news, but then it was trying to test the downside. But perhaps around 18,800 for Hang Seng is a very good level to buy, mm. right? So after that, it can go to 22,000 mm. um, in probably the first quarter. So we like those consumer sectors, the internet sectors, okay. the consumer discretionary, communication services, which is heavy on the China internet consumption. Uh, well, let's, let's talk about the winners this year and what you think that they look like next year. So uh, geographical within Asia, that's India and Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Sector-wise, that's energy. What do, you, what do you think happens to the three next year? Yes, so energy probably, you know, next year we're still like that for, you know, the U.S. and Europe. Mm. But then the upside is probably not going to be as much as this year, right? Because, mm. you know, you do have global slowdown. So the supply dynamics is relatively tight, but then there's slowdown in the demand. So we see that oil is probably going to stay around 75 to, 75 to 80, around those levels. So energy can still do okay, but then the revenge is probably going to be in the growth stocks in the second half of next year.